And the summer is officially underway, guys. But yeah, we got to wrap up July before we move on. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another monthly wrap-up, this time for July of 2022. We're going to talk about all those great things that happened in the month and maybe the not-so-good things. And, uh, you know, the good old book of the month, always a fun conversation to have when you start trying to figure these things out and looking between the lines of what's going on in the channel. But, hey, I love to share those things with you. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Let's begin with what I read in July. I think I read about five and a half books, uh, half, because there is a... a a big old, uh, not a DNF, but there is a shelved on there. And it shelved, the difference for me, guys, DNF means I have no plans to go back to it. Shelved means I'll finish this later. Uh, I'm not ready to call it quits, but I'm uh, not really feeling it. But we'll get into that here in just a second. So uh, five actual books, actually pretty pretty low for me, but some of them are pretty heavy. I also did have uh, you know a family vacation during that time. So uh, yeah, I'm surprised I got as much in as I did. But let's just get into it, guys. I read two well, one and a half Codex Alera books by Jim Butcher, Furies of Calderon, which I thought was okay. Wasn't nothing wrong with it. Just wasn't really anything that was kind of, you know, making me itch to start the second book. And then the second book I got about halfway and said that was uh, Academ's Fury. I got about halfway and started thinking, I am not feeling this. And it, do I really feel like reading four more of these in eight weeks for that read-along? And just said, no, I, I, I really don't. So... I wasn't disliking it enough to quit, but it just wasn't really grabbing me at all. I didn't find anything unique about it, and it just I didn't see any reason why I wanted to go back to it because there wasn't anything special that was really, really clicking for me. So uh, if it's a series that you love, I think that's awesome. It's something, I like I said, I do plan to return to. Just not right now. I just wasn't feeling it right now. So uh, we'll come back to that uh, a little later. But as of right now, uh, yeah, it's, it's the kind of thing that if you're taking my advice, I would say, uh, you know, Check it out, make your own mind up, but uh, I wouldn't break my TBR for it. That's kind of how I would rank it for now. Then I continued the Jade War series. Well, I guess the, the series is Greenbone, but the book is Jade War. Continued that series, and Jade War I liked quite a bit. Uh, I actually was reading it on my vacation, so that was a nice uh, little reminder there that I was on vacation while I was reading that. And also, I'll always associate those two things together now, just like I did with Gray Peril on my previous cruise with uh, with Dresden Files and Ryera. That was where I kind of discovered that series. So it's kind of fun when you can uh, associate a book or a series back with a really, really fun vacation. You know, I think that always kind of helps uh, helps you remember things fondly, like I did with Fonda Lee. See what I did there? Okay, guys, let's go ahead and move on. Fire and Blood, George R. R. Martin. This was a reread. This was something that uh, I wanted to do in anticipation for House of the Dragon coming out here in about three weeks from today. But uh, with that one, uh, it was kind of revisiting because I admitted that I was maybe a little grumpy when I read it. Uh, look, guys, it's like maybe my favorite fantasy world ever, and I was grumpy during a new Song of Ice and Fire book because it wasn't Wins a Winter. So I said, I want to revisit it. And I'm glad I did, because it really did reawaken that Westeros itch in me. And uh, I'm super, super excited about this world and rereading these books now, which is why I went ahead and started A Game of Thrones, the first book in the Song of Ice and Fire. The thing with that, guys, is I've reread those first three books about a half dozen times at least. You know, I used to reread them all the time, and then I reread them again right before Feast for Crows came out, and then I reread them all again right before uh, Dance of Dragons came out. And guys... It's, uh, that was the last time I did it. And, uh, you know, I didn't have kids back then. Now my kids are 10 and 7. So I felt like it was time. It was time to go back and revisit because I'm going to be doing this, uh, this after show, this podcast uh, for, for House of the Dragon. And, you know, one thing I know about Song of Ice and Fire fans is they love to get out the red pen and fact check you. And I was like, look, I felt like I had forgotten more than a lot of people ever know about A Song of Ice and Fire. So I want to kind of refresh my memory and go back and revisit these lands and, uh, you know, just make sure that I'm back to being an encyclopedia that I once was for the series for that podcast. But uh, yeah, great, great time revisiting that world. I still say that A Song of Ice and Fire, uh, I'm sorry, or, or Game of Thrones, the first book of Song of Ice and Fire, might be the best game, uh, very, very best book one of any fantasy series I've ever read. It really is that good. It definitely has the best ending of a book one in a fantasy series ever. So maybe it's uh, just because I just finished that today. So I'm so excited to really talk about it. And then I went back into the multiverse guys with some Stephen King and I did Rose Matter, which I think is a pretty underrated book. You know, I know that it's kind of one of the ones you don't even hear mentioned. There's some I say always be like, oh, people always have it like in their bottom third. 
I feel like people would make a Stephen King list and they would just flat out forget to put Rose Matter on it. I, I do think it's kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, not just in the usual Stephen King way, in that it feels like two different books. It feels like he wanted to start like a domestic abuse, domestic abuse on the run kind of book first, and then he just decided, eh, hey, let's just kind of dip into Greek mythology and see what happens. That's kind of how I feel about that book. But I did think it was really, really good on this reread. Again, I think that's one of those uh, like insomnia that when I read it as a teenager, wasn't really exactly what I was wanting. I still wanted to Stephen King to scare me at the time. So him going through that transitionary period that he was, I wasn't really interested at the time. But as an adult, I found plenty to enjoy about it. But those are the five and a half books that I did get into this month. I'm going to go ahead and count Game of Thrones because I did finish it today, August 1, which I guess if you're watching this now, it's probably August 2. But uh, I'm just saying that I'm going to go ahead and count that for July. However, guys, when we talk about book of the month, I want you to know, don't count rereads. And both George R. R. Martin books and the Stephen King book were rereads, so I can't count those. Based off my lukewarm reaction to Codex Alera, I'm pretty sure you can put the math together and decide I know what book of the month for you is. However, it didn't win by default. It actually is quite deserving of the book of the month. I'm talking, of course, about Jade War by Miss Fonda Lee. Now, with this, I said that I did like Jade City better. However, I think that Jade War did have bigger moments in it. Because, you know, the first book is really, uh, it's got some of that coming-of-age stuff I like. It really, really felt like the Godfather, in, like in Japan kind of setting with a little bit of touch of magic, you know. Uh, but I, with that one, with War, I think it had bigger moments in it, you know. Didn't have as much of the good character stuff that I liked in book one, but it really had some moments that were just like, oh my God, like, wow. So it was a big twist and turns and stuff that kind of kept me guessing all the way. And I'll go ahead and tell you guys, I wasn't right on any of my guesses. So it's definitely kept me on my toes enough to where I'm really excited to finish the series because I actually did start Jay Legacy today after I finished the Game of Thrones. So I'm excited to see how that tale does come to a close here very, very soon. But as far as Jade War, easy, easy pick for my book of the month. And, uh, you know, outside of the rereads, I, I can't say that I came even close to reading anything better this month. So uh, when you're talking about Song of Ice and Fire, of course, that's going to be that's going to be hard shoes to fill there. But, you know, as far as modern fantasy, I, I think that uh, Greenbow Saga is going to go down as one of my favorite trilogies uh, of modern fantasy authors, for sure, because uh, everyone tells me that Jay Legacy is the best. Like, everyone. Everyone. See, I'm mean, unanimous. I don't hear anybody say Jay Legacy isn't the best one. And I've really, really enjoyed the first two books. So uh, while Jade City didn't get my book of the month, uh, Jade Ward did. And I know I just said I like Jade City better, but you got to look at the other stuff I read last month. But, you know, you can go back and check that out if you want. I already forgot what my book was. Oh, it was a... Uh, it was a. Uh, What's his name? Robert McCammon. Yeah, Robert McCammon. So uh, I didn't read a new Robert McCammon this month, so <laughs> he couldn't go for the uh, Triple Crown. But uh, you know what? I will be reading more McCammon this year, so it's always still possible to get three in one year. We will see. But as for this one, guys, Jade War by Fonda Lee, I highly recommend you read this series. It's really, really good. I don't care what you're into. Uh, I think that you'll like what you find there. And uh, Jade War, yeah, like I said, book of the month. Let's go ahead, guys, and move along to some channel growth here. I think things are starting to stabilize a little bit, I think. And what I mean by that is, you know, we did have the, the dark period, uh, I think February, March, and April, where I was really starting to think, okay, I think I might have gotten in some trouble with the content creator overlords. Well, things have kind of stabilized now. Uh, numbers aren't as good as last month. They, they feel like they feel like it went down just a little bit, but I feel like they're kind of similar each month now. And that's just kind of what I, you know, would hope to see as a content creator. But uh, 2,275 new subscribers, that's down just 63 from June. And I'm actually surprised, guys, at some of these numbers because, like I said, I was gone for a week, you know, so I couldn't really uh, monitor any engagement while I was gone because, uh, yeah, when I go on a vacation like that, I want to unplug. I don't want Wi-Fi. Uh, let's see here, 375,000 views. That's actually up 10,000 from June. So actually more eyes actually uh, finding some of these videos, maybe not walking as long though, or watching as long because 58,000 uh, hours of watch time, which is down 1,000 from June. So again, very, very minimal change there. So I'm very, very happy uh, kind of where these are. Like I said, you, as a content creator, subscribers are nice. It's really good for the aesthetics. People will see that number and think, okay, this person's serious because they got a big audience. However, 
as a content creator, what matters the most is interaction and views and watch time is actually what's going to be the most important to us internally. So those things look good. But like I said, pretty comparable to May and June. So I'm kind of really, really happy with how that's going, especially when you consider the fact that I had uh, a week vacation and then I had kind of that slow period as I was trying to play catch up at work right after. So uh, I, I might have slacked off on the channel a little bit this month. You know, I did record ahead and stuff, but as far as like the, uh, you know, the actual engagement with the audience, I was pretty, pretty lax on that this month. So uh, I'll try, I'll try to do better here in August. Let's talk about some of the most popular content for the month. I was actually surprised by this number. I uploaded 21 videos in July. So 21 out of 31 days, I got a new video out there. How about that? But uh, I don't count uh, weekly updates or off the books on here. And I didn't do any off the books. My weekly update videos actually get a quite a pretty good amount of viewers. But I like to keep this to stuff that's like original, whereas that's just a, like a reading vlog. That's really all that is. But uh, So I don't like to really count that. However, there are some, uh, you know, original kind of content here that, uh, that actually drew in some audience. Obviously, book hauls almost always going to win this. People love to see new books. They love to uh, see them. They love to hear, you know, if they sent you something, they want to hear the shout out, which I have no problems doing. I love doing that, guys, because I love thanking you for the amazing stuff that you send me, because you do send me amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, that had 13 thousand views uh, that one actually recorded like the day after i got back from vacation so i actually had like a little bit of suntan in that one you know believe it or not i actually got some sun instead of burning where you should start with the cosmere also got thirteen thousand views but like i hadn't talked about the cosmere in a while and i got that question a lot you know where should i start with brandon sanderson i said well i've only read the cosmere so how about i kind of adapted into where you should start with the Cosmere. So uh, most people, I'm always going to tell Mistborn uh, is where you should start with Sanderson or, or the Cosmere. But I, I kind of present it in that kind of, you know, what you're looking for, this kind of might be a good place to start for you or where you shouldn't start at all. You know, like Arcanum Unbounded would be a dumb, dumb place to start with the Cosmere. But uh, yeah, of course, anytime you talk about Sanderson, it's going to get a lot of attention and a lot of uh, disagreement. <laughs> you know, but I'm always happy to talk about that because, uh, you know, we just got the news that uh, that Stormlight number five, yeah, Stormlight number five is actually going to be delayed a little bit, which is kind of a bummer. But uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. I'd rather him take him his time and do it right than try to you know make sure he sticks to a schedule. But uh, yeah, I was happy to talk about the Cosmere again because it's been a while. This is the first time I've went without reading a Brandon Sanderson book in over a year since I discovered the guy. So there's that. Uh, halfway home. The first half of 2022. It's kind of like a, you know, your year end thing where you put all your best of the best together. It kind of did that. It didn't really rank them, but you know, kind of like the extended version of a, you know a monthly wrap up. We talked about my favorite book this year and you know the most popular stuff I've done on the channel. Things like that. It's always a lot of fun to do. At least I have a lot of fun with that. That one had 8,000 views, and then this one actually kind of surprised me, and I'm happy for it because I love the Red Rising saga, guys. But whenever I talk about Red Rising on the channel, it doesn't usually garner much interest from my audience but uh book six and seven announcement and what that kind of means for the channel plans that one has seven thousand views so i was quite happy to see that because if we are turning the corner and people actually want red rising content that would be great so uh i really talk about the plans to do a reread of that and if people want to reread with me or if they want to read along with me they can do so with that schedule that I announced in that video. So just because, you know, now we have book six and seven and we don't know when seven's coming out doesn't mean this, the plans are changing. We'll just have to wait and maybe we can wait together. That is the hope there. And then my House of the Dragon trailer breakdown had 6,000 views. And guys, watch my energy level in that video. That might be the most excited video that I did all month. Uh, just because uh, I do love this world and the show looks like it's going to exceed my original expectations. Uh, that, if, that, now look, anybody can make a good trailer. You know, I mean, I remember The Last Jedi had an awesome trailer, guys. You know, so uh, trailers can be deceiving. And, you know, I just, I don't know. I just feel like this is in the right hands. George is really out there promoting it. And I think after the negative reaction that the end of Game of Thrones got, I don't think George would be doing that if he felt like this was trash. If there's something that's going to further just, you know, trash the legacy of a series. So uh, I don't know. I'm really excited about it and I wanted to actually kind of get that out there and talk about what was in that trailer because there's a lot of people who haven't read Fire and Blood you know they don't know anything about it they're not sure if they'd be into it or not so I want to tell them that guys this is still really great stuff and the best thing about it guys that source material that they're adapting on that show is complete so we actually have an ending in place but I'm very excited about it and I was very excited to talk about it I just I, I love talking about that world you know uh, even if it's just the show if it's just the books doesn't matter I love talking about that world quite a bit and this one being like you know a section of the the world that a lot of people don't know the history of uh, I felt like hey 
I want to make sure I can kind of put this out there in terms that everyone's going to understand, maybe get them more excited about the show because we are going to be doing an after show for that. And I want people to join us for that. That brings me to some of my, my stuff that didn't actually... Uh, you know, get a ton of views, but I still really, really enjoyed doing. Uh, I did enjoy talking about nothing with the Gwen, Gwen Bros, uh, Ed and Will. That was a great time. I felt like we probably could have talked for twice that long, but my kids, you know, they kind of, uh, they party bombed us and they were knocking on my door because, you know, they hadn't eaten two hours. You know, if you have young kids, you know that they're just going to shrivel up and die if you don't feed them during that time. And I also liked reviving Throne Zone. Now, Throne Zone was a Game of Thrones segment we used to do on my old podcast that I had before I started this channel. And I got the blessing of my old podcast host uh, to uh, have a, a new panel together. Uh, and I got Madison and, of course, my good friend Scott, the bald booktuber, together. And Madison does the As the Wheel Turns with me as well. And we decided we weren't going to do one for Rings of Power, but we are going to do one for House of the Dragon because we are all just crazy about A Song of Ice and Fire. So we want to do an after show for this. And this one we plan to do live. But for our first couple episodes, we didn't. And didn't get a bunch of, you know traffic for those because I know that a lot of people still are hurt. They're still hurt by HBO and they don't trust them so they're not super excited about this. So I'm hoping word of mouth over time will be good for the show and people will decide that they're ready to be hurt again and they'll come and check out that show with us. And for my goals for August, guys, I mean, uh, with these things, it's always... It, it's house money. It doesn't it doesn't really matter to me. It's great. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add one more year, you know, another plus one to my age. Uh, turn 44 on Thursday. Uh, so, you know, try to stay alive. That's always a thing. Try to, to fight Father Time as much as possible. I do say I feel better now than I did at 40, you know, because that's when I've decided, hey, maybe it's time to get healthy, you know. Uh, but we're going to hit 75,000 this month unless something crazy happens. And that's nice. I mean, that's always a nice milestone to hit. And I won't lie to you guys, that was my year end goal was 75,000. So uh, we're going to hit that uh, here at the beginning of August. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's a nice aesthetic, and sure, I'd like one day to have that 100,000 plaque on my wall just because it will feel like an achievement. But uh, yeah, as far as goals the rest of the year, it's just gravy at this point. But uh, that live stream is going to come when that does happen, though. I do I do plan on doing another uh, AMA uh, whenever I hit 75,000. Just talk to you awesome people and hear whatever kind of crazy... Because I got some crazy questions in the last one, guys, and it was... Uh, I think you actually might actually see me blush on that one. You don't know? I don't know. Go back and check it out. I think it's still on the channel. Uh, but continue to champion that reading freedom thing that I keep talking about. Like how I just out of nowhere decided to reread A Game of Thrones. That just really came out of nowhere. And I love having that ability to do that now. Sure, I, I do sometimes feel like I'm never going to be able to read everything. But you know what? Damn it, I want to read what I want to read now. So uh, I'm just going to kind of make sure that I keep doing that. And as always, just try to ensure that this continues to be a positive and welcome community for anyone and everyone. I don't care what you're into. I want everyone to feel welcome here. And uh, that's something I'm always going to say I want to be the mission statement of this channel. I want people to feel welcome here. I want people to feel like they are part of the show. That's why I get, you know, real transparent with you guys about how the channel is growing or not. I, I love to talk to you guys about how these things going. I want you to feel like you are a part of it. So I hope that we'll always continue that, not just for August, but forever. So guys, that was my month. How about you? What was your, hey, what was your favorite video I made this month? That's a fact, that's a fun one. But also, what was your book of the month? I would love to hear it, guys. So drop in the comments and let me know, and I'll talk to you there.